Good morning, everybody. I'm Sarah. I'm the Real Simple Mama, and this is going to be a video in regards to a non-invasive bumblefoot treatment. Thank you so much to everybody who, over the years, has been jumping on my chicken coop, who has been asking questions about a non-invasive bumblefoot treatment, and by that I mean, and you see the afflicted right here. And a non-invasive means that you're not cutting open your chicken's foot. You're trying to do a treatment without having to do a minor surgery, basically. And it's not always possible, but this is the thing that I get the most questions on. And there's so many of you that are wonderful. You love your chickens. You want to do what's best for them. But I realized that I could do better by showing you a little bit more details. So this video is going to show you, this is Miss Muffet, and it's gonna be a whole bunch of shorter video clips, but what we're gonna show you is this is what a minor bumblefoot looks like on her foot. We're gonna go step by step through all of the different stages of treatment on how I wrap her foot, what products I use, what order I do them in, what the products look like, and all of that stuff. And then I'm gonna give you some more suggestions. So bumblefoot really quickly is a staph infection because your chickens are, case in point, are out in the dirt and the rocks and the ground all day. They dig around, right, Bluebird? They dig around, they make messes, they poop on the ground, all kinds of stuff like that. And so it is inevitable that they're gonna get like little micro abrasions, little cuts on the bottom of their feet. And chickens have four toes. So there's the three in front and one in back. And then they have this like a palm of their foot, or I call it like the pad of their foot right there in the middle where all of the toes intersect. And either on the bottom of one of the toes or in that foot pad, it's not uncommon for a chicken to get a scab, right? They get a little cut. But the problem is that instead of us, where we get a little cut and we go use soap and water or hydrogen peroxide or neosporin, right? Or we put band-aids on it, they're like meh and they go around and they keep digging in the dirt in the poop so sometimes it does turn into a little black scab which is a minor bumblefoot but if it's not treated and it's a serious enough case it can turn into a staph infection that gets into the chicken's blood and can kill them now I don't say that to freak you out I just say that first of all that I hope you're doing a medical check on your chickens I would say about once a month and you can see that video up here and it's basically, I recommend you grab the birds one at a time at night when they're up and roosting. You use a headlamp and you kind of do like a physical exam. You do a once over and check and make sure they're good. And so in this video, I will show you what a minor bumblefoot looks like, what I mean. And in my experience, and I've healed three or four minor bumblefoots in this method that I'm going to show you. I need to copyright it, don't I? Um, but without having to um, cut into the flesh and like squeeze out the pus and do all of that stuff, because these cases that I've done, number one, I caught them early because I do medical checks on my birds. I don't wait until my chicken is limping until she looks like she's half dead. I catch it early. So that's the first thing, right? Like I feel like Smokey the Bear, like you've got some prevention because you do those medical checks. And then number two, if you're consistent in your treatment and you use the products that I use, then I feel like a lot of times you can heal it and repair it without having to cut into her foot. Her body will heal itself because you're helping it out. So I'll say finally that I am not a vet. I never have been one. I'm never going to be one. This is just stuff that I've learned from researching all different kinds of chicken journals, chicken books. I've, I've listened to videos and read articles. And the products that I recommend here, I don't get paid by those companies for recommending them. Now, I will have affiliate links down in the video description so you can click on them. There's no extra cost to you. It's the same price it would normally be. But a percentage of it goes to me. Okay, so here we are with Miss Muffet and we're going to be treating her for a bumblefoot. So this is what their foot should look like. Notice it's nice and squishy, it's pink. I mean, obviously there's dirt, but we're not dealing with any scabs or anything like this. This is a foot that's got a bumblefoot on it. This is after I've cleaned it. So you see the black scab. The pad, if I'm squeezing it, it is still squishy. It does still have give to it. There's not a lot of like red angry flesh and there's not like a whole bunch of swelling so this is not a major case but we're gonna go ahead and treat it anyway and here we are with a less than happy chicken so this is the first step what I'm doing is soaking her feet and I'm just doing both of her feet because obviously that's easier than just one and this serves two purposes number one the warm water and the Epsom salts just plain no smells no funny stuff um, what it's doing is it's softening the scab and it's softening that skin so it'll be easier to work with. But the other thing is, is as you can see, I'm just agitating her feet. I'm trying to wash her feet so that I can clean everything. That way I can really see what I'm dealing with. If it's possible, do this for at least 10 or 15 minutes because that'll really get the skin soft. Thinking about how chickens have evolved, the skin on their feet is very rough, it's very tough. So let it soak. 
And then the other thing is, if you're able, obviously, if you have an assistant or a helper, try to take photos every couple of days of what the bumblefoot looks like so you can kind of see how it's progressing. If it's a minor one like hers, you're going to see that black scab, that black circle, is just going to get smaller and smaller with time. If it's a more serious case, then you want the scab to be falling off so you can get all of the pus and junk out from inside. So I'm going to soak her for a while, I'm going to dry her, and then we're going to wrap up her foot. So we've been sitting here for a while. You can tell she's stressed out, she's panting. So I wanted to show you, this is my chicken medical kit and you can see up here, this is everything that I have in it and why I have the information. But what we're gonna do once she's dry is we're going to first spray it with the antimicrobial spray. And in theory, you'd like it to air dry, but you don't have to wipe it off or anything. So spray the heck out of the wound with this. Then I'm going to put on some Prid. This is that little round tin. It feels, it's a salve, so it feels like, you know, Carmex or whatever, it's really thick. So I'm gonna make sure my hands are clean. I'm gonna get a good dollop of that and I'm gonna put it on the Bumblefoot. Then we're going to use a square of non-stick gauze. That's just the pad, there's no adhesive on it. I'm gonna fold it and make it into a little square. And then we're going to use this vet wrap or this bandage that sticks to itself. You use it after you get lab work done. And then we're gonna wrap it around between her toes so that it stays on her foot. So that's next. Okay, now we're going through the final step. We're gonna use all of this stuff. Um, of course, you wanna make sure you're in a sterile condition so that I cleaned all of this. So first, and of course she's trying to grab onto me but we're gonna spray the hell out of her with the Vetericin. And you can let it air dry or you can pat dry the excess, but there's gonna be an overlap of product between this being a liquid and then the Prid, which as you can see is really super thick. It's like thicker than Vaseline. So, and again, this is Prid. You can find it um, at Tractor Supply. Um, it's a homeopathic drawing salve. It's supposed to pull stuff out, but it's really super thick. So make sure your hands are clean and then you're gonna want a towel to wipe this stuff off because it's nasty. So we did the Vetericin, which is the antimicrobial spray. Then I'm gonna get a big old dollop of that. Ugh. And I'm gonna wipe it. You know, it's, you, you're not gonna get it just exactly on one tiny little spot. It's gonna kind of go all over the affected area like that. And so now I'm gonna wipe this stuff off on another towel because it's gross. Okay, so what we did is we sterilized the area just to make sure, you know, if that scab opens up, we don't want like more germs going in there, right? And then the Prid is gonna help pull stuff to the surface, pull it out. And normally I would not be trying to do this with one hand, but I've got, this is just that goofy gauze that doesn't stick to anything. You can fold it as tiny as you want, but you just want it to just go splat right there. And the Prid will kind of hold it on and then comes the fun part. What we're gonna do is use this vet wrap and this is the stuff that sticks to itself as you fold it on itself. The challenge here is that you can leave one of these bandages on in theory for up to like 48 hours. If it's not a bad case like hers, I don't have to do this like three times a day. If it's a more serious case, the flesh was really red, angry, it felt hard, it looks like, like a really active infection. Ideally, you wanna to try to do this whole process twice a day. But honestly, in her case, if I wrap it well enough and the bandage stays on, it can stay on her for two days. So the challenge is you do the vet wrap is you wanna go between all of the different, different toes and make sure that you really hold that gauze on but you don't wanna do it so tight that you cut off circulation to her toes. So, but in theory, they shouldn't pick at each other's feet because it's not red, it doesn't look like blood. So she should leave it alone and unless she does something really goofy or like she's playing in the mud or something, it should stay on for a few days. So what I'll do is I'm gonna put her down so I can wrap her up myself and then we'll show you the final product here in just a minute. Ta-da! So here we have it if you wanna show. So I did it firmly. This bandage is stuck really well to itself. I mean, it looks ridiculous because you don't want to splay their toes out really super far. So I tried to keep it in a natural position with her little back toe is like that. But this should be able to stay in place unless we get more heavy rain or something. Yep. Just like that. I know. I know. So for her, since it wasn't a bad case, I can leave this on probably at least 24 hours. I'm gonna keep an eye on it because it's a bright, annoying color. That way it's easy for me to see at a glance if it's still on or not. As a side note, we found using a hand towel and gripping it, having it wrapped up tight around her shoulders, around her wings, I can hold her with one hand really easily. So we're gonna let her go now, but I wanted to show you, this is our step-by-step -step of how to do a non-invasive bumblefoot treatment. If just in conclusion, if you've got a chicken where the scab is really big, the flesh, it like it's hard, that whole foot pad is hard, 
um, it just looks really angry, like a really angry infection. You may need to look in doing the, into doing the more invasive treatment, which I honestly have never had to do. I've always caught my bumblefoots early because I do those medical checks on a regular basis. But if you feel like this infection doesn't look super bad, I mean, it's got this scab, it hasn't really gone away on its own in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna go ahead and do something. This is the way for you to do it where you're not making an incision into your chicken's flesh, where you're just treating it from the outside. So what we'll do is we'll let that prid sit there and work. It's all totally clean now. She's all wrapped up. And so we will check back later and see how she's doing. We're back, it's a couple days later. So she had that bandage on for two days. And again, this is a more minor case. This isn't like anything super urgent. Um, in a lot of instances, something like that minor case might heal on its own. But because I was putting her up for being a jerk face anyway, I thought I'd go ahead and wrap her foot. So all we've done is we caught her, we took the bandage off. I haven't bathed her or anything yet. So this is literally what it looks like as soon as the bandages come off. So if you wanna look at her foot, there we go. So that black scab in the middle of the foot pad is what we were dealing with. And so as needed, you can, hey, 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 you can continue to do that every, of course she's trying to take my shirt off, every day, every two days, depending on how severe the case is. I know it's a pain for you to have to continue to like, then I would soak her foot in Epsom salt and then I would re-bandage it again. And of course you use clean bandages every time. You need to have your hands clean and sanitized before you're dealing with them and putting your finger in the prid and all of that stuff. But if it wasn't a huge, like big serious case to begin with, oftentimes you can treat it without having to cut into their foot and do like a minor outpatient surgery type process, right? So I'm gonna keep an eye on it. I'm gonna see how she's doing here in a couple of days. But right now I'm gonna put her down so she doesn't get too hot. You can always put questions down here below. Here's my email address, but that's the process that I use for doing a less invasive bumblefoot treatment on my chickens. Thanks for watching.